Hey, what's going on, everybody? Armand Owens here once again with another episode of the Daily Unsung Leader Leadership Nugget. And uh, today I want to talk about a tool that I have been using uh, for about 15 years, 15 years now. Um, it is actually one of the first leadership tools uh, that I learned when I became a chief petty officer. They no longer teach it. Um, because the Navy allowed the, the licensing to expire. But back in the day, the Navy had, had an, uh, an, a license with uh, Ken Blanchard. Ken Blanchard of uh, One Minute Manager, um, those type of books. Well, he had a, uh, came out with a, a theory for being a flexible leader, where instead of having one leadership style that you know, cover the basis for everything. It was, you know, you responding to the development level of the individual, right? So if I have a, a new individual, I'm going to apply a different model of leadership uh, for that individual than somebody who is seasoned, you know, been a part of the organization, been a part of the team, you know, for a while has, has gained some cachet, um, has done some great things. I'm not going to treat those people, you know, the same. And this is kind of where, you know, this theory came out, you know, comes, you know, comes out of, and it's called uh, situational leadership. So uh, we and my fellow chief selectees, when we made chief, we had a, a stack of CDs that we had to, that we had to get done um, and finish the coursework. And it was kind of a, a fast forward of, all right, you just made chief. You're taking over a division. No different than you know getting a uh, getting a, a promotion, and now you're you know you used to have your peers used to you know used to work together. Now you have a team of you know ten five you know ten fifteen people or even more. <clears throat> and hey, how can we get this individual from not leading a team you know to leading a team in the quickest? possible way what tool can we use and that's where um, the navy uh, brought in you know contracted kim blanchard to to bring in this situational leadership model and really what it's based on is you know kind of a four four quadrant i got i got uh i got props today all right essentially bringing in a a four quadrant kind of model where you know first and foremost you know, here directing, right? S1. S1 correlates with the newest person. The newest person that just came a part of your team and he's D, he or she is D1, right? And that person has, you know, low competence uh, and high commitment, right? They're excited about being on the team. They, they just don't know anything, right? So you put them in S1, right? So these people are in uh, S1. And the way the leadership model that you you lost for those individuals is directing. It's very autocratic. It's very, hey, you're going to do X, Y, Z in this order, no deviation, right? You are directing autocratic. There's very little feedback, but there's uh, high, high direction, high guidance, high oversight, right? In an effort, you know, to transition and grow this person based on uh, your observations, you know, to level S. Two, right. So now they take they go from directing that you know that D one person goes from the di from directing. Now that D one goes to S two, which is you know now the coaching model, right? The person in D two is you know you know low to uh, to to moderate, low to you know low to moderate competence, where he's growing some competence, but low commitment, right? Because here's what you gotta you, what you gotta keep in mind is as those as they transition and grow. There's been a there's been some failures, you know, that have happened early on. There's been some, you know, some growing pains at, you know, because that, that growth, that growth from uh, D1 to D2 is a lot because you come into the organization super happy, su super excited. And then the reality of, hey, I don't know anything, you know, starts to kind of overwhelm you a little bit. So that commitment level diminishes a little bit. So you have to account for that commitment level diminishing with that coaching model. And when you look at you know, coaching, all you got to do is just go to your favorite team. If you don't have a favorite team, uh, your spouse's favorite team, your cousin's favorite team, um, and look at some of the coaches, right? They they illustrate how things are supposed to be laid out, but there's also that air of, 
uh, inspiration is a part of you know that model as well. There's a there's there's high levels of encouragement that come along with the coaching model, right? Because you want to bring this individual's level of commitment, you know, back up to you know to D one levels, so that it, it starts to it goes along with that competence and that commitment goes along that same curve. And once you you apply that coaching model, um, you got personnel in S two. You want to trans transition them into S three, which is supporting. And this person is a D three, which is they've trans they they're your moderate to high level of competence, um, and their commitment kind of you know kind of goes up and down, right? And that's really based on the things that they've done in terms of the things that they've uh, accomplished. Um, this is where you find in the Navy your your E5s, your 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 season E5s, or your E6s, where their competence level is up here, right? But every now and then, you know, you have those sign, you have that sine wave effect with regards to their level of commitment, right? So this is more supporting, right? The encouragement still remains high, but it's more of a hands-off stepping back, allowing them, giving them, facilitating that environment where they can kind of fall on the grass, right? Where they can. Uh, mess up, but they can grow. They can go and do what needs to be done. They can, you know, show off their level of, you know, levels of competence and not have you over their shoulder, um, you know, being, you know, being a micromanager. These people are, um, these people in the supporting S3 range are now getting to the point where they no longer really need you. They just need you to, to provide a framework, you know, for, hey, what needs to get done? Got it. And they, and being there if they do need you. Right. And being there, but not inserting yourself where you're you know, kind of pushing them down and stunning their growth because of the level of oversight. And finally, going from uh, S3 supporting down to S4 delegating. Right. So S3 from S3 uh, down to S4 delegating. That's where um, your your people are. Um, they're high competence and they're they have a high level of commitment. Um, and you just need to sit back and let those those individuals go. Um, it's more a collaborative effort rather than an autocratic do as I say you know type of model. It is, hey, how are we going to do these things? How are we? And the feedback at this level uh, is 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 high um, because they're learning, they're growing, they're seeing things from their perspective. They have the high level commitment, high competence. So now it's it, it's it's more of a team effort. You are uh, working with this individual, you know, just preparing them for that next level. Right? They're already you know, they've already shown that they have the ability to, you know, to take your job, so to speak. Um, they're ready to be leader because as a leader, our job is to make leaders. But you have effectively made that leader where all you got to do is, hey, our vision is this. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Ready, set and go. Right. And ultimately, that's what you're trying to get to. Um, this model is a one that is extremely versatile because you may have an individual that is a a one in one aspect of the job that they're doing, but a four in another aspect of the job they're doing. So it's a you it, it's a a very easy way to kind of compartmentalize where your people are and how you should be approaching them and how you should be you know interacting them with them from a leadership standpoint. Um you know situational leadership has you know it it served me amazingly for my first couple of years you know in leadership um because it was it was something that I could refer to. I could put on paper. OK, I got my you know, I got my division. I got them laid out. All right. Uh, you know, person A, uh, she's a one person, uh, person uh, B. Uh, he's a he's an S3. Right. So I need to support them. What does supporting look like? I, uh, I need to be there for them. I need to stand back and don't be a micromanager. But the S1 person, I need to be there. Oversight, directing, autocratic. Um and it really helps to kind of solidify how you structure your team, how you structure your leadership. Now, it's it's a it's a foundational piece. It's a it's a starting off piece. It's not all encompassing. 
You know, there are some flaws that exist within the situational leadership model. But as a as a uh, new leader, even as, even even as a, a, a seasoned leader, it's a good tool to utilize, you know, to compartmentalize your people and kind of keep in mind how you should interact you know, with your team. When you're getting into extremely large teams, um, that's where things kind of break down, you know, because that compartmentalization that's supposed to make things a lot easier you know, begins to become a little bit more complicated just because of sheer number of people. Um, you know, but, you know, at the higher levels, when you're talking about leading leaders, uh, you can compartmentalize those leaders and put them into into those realms as well, because you may have a, a brand new leader that you're you know, that you're supervising um, that is in a S1. He's a he or she is a D1. So you need to be you need to be more of a directing you know type of leader for that new leader that's coming in. Um, so it works across the board. Um, like I said, it's a it's a great tool that I've utilized. I've, I continue to utilize it, um, but a, a wonderful stepping off point, jumping off point for uh, you know cultivating you know cultivating your team and and learning leadership. So um, I could talk about you know situation leadership for days, um, and uh, you know so if you got questions about you know what this looks like, um, Ken Blatchard is the uh, the 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 author um, of, you know, of this leadership theory. And I'll make sure that I put it, you know, put that in the comments for, you know, in the, in the description so you can reference back to, you know, what this looks like as well. So you can go back to the reference uh, documentation. Um, but uh, I'll be back again uh, tomorrow with some, uh, you know, with some new information. And uh, I'm hoping that you're gaining value from what uh, these videos are bringing. Um, if you're not, I apologize. Let me know what you want me to talk about. Um, if there's anything that's out there that uh, that's on your mind, whether it be you know conflict management or whether it be how to deal with micromanagers, how, whatever the case may be, please you know put it in the comments. Let me know. F give me some feedback. Let me know what you want me to talk about, and uh, you know I'll, I'll I'll try to tackle it. As remember, um, I am a I am a growing leader myself. Uh, one of the things I proclaim that I know nothing so that I can stay in a position of uh, continual growth, right? So a lot of these things are from my perspective and uh, I love the feedback so that we can expand our aperture and all together become better leaders. Unsung Leader, out.